the eclipse is over and now it's time for all of us to process our photos of totality and ideally get something like this. This is an HDR edit of the photos of totality I took on April 8th, 2024. In a previous video, I used JPEGs from 2017 to show you three different ways you can do an HDR edit of totality. And the third method I covered was the pellet method that's been around for over 25 years. And that method was by far the most popular. And today I finally have my own raw data from 2024 and I'm going to apply the pellet method once again to show you just how much detail you can get out of your images with just these tactics. And in this video, I put a little bit of a twist into the pellet method and kind of double stack it. And we'll see the results at the end. So during my imaging, I took a bracket of 14 images during totality over and over again over three and a half minutes. And the exposures range from one two thousandths of a second to four seconds. And they were all taken from Northern Vermont. And I saw all of your comments from the last video. And in this video, we will be aligning on the prominences since they are very prominent. And I also use just one reference frame, unlike the last video where I kept switching reference frame. And that is bad practice. And the one thing I'll mention and one thing that you'll notice is that Aligning on the prominences get harder and harder the longer your exposures are because the whole thing gets washed out by the corona getting brighter and brighter. But we'll deal with that in the video. So let's dive in. So these are all of my images from my AT60 and T5i combination. Uh, I shot in RAW and JPEG, so there are doubles of each of these, but they're CR2 and JPEG files. And these are all of my totality shots that range from here, which were taken at uh, 726 p.m. UTC time all the way to this last one, 7.30. So it's about three and a half minutes of totality for me. And if we look at a couple of these, so if I open one of these first ones here, this one one thousandth of a second, we zoom in, we can kind of see the two prominences on this side. There's another prominence here that looks pretty cool. Some more here, looks really nice. And the prominence that everyone saw and has been talking about is this bright one. And that shows up in one of the later sessions here. So right before C2. So if I look at one of these, pull that over and you can zoom in here. You can see that the prominences on top here have disappeared because the moon has moved up and left on my screen and it has, it's blocking those. But these prominences here then become visible. And because the moon has moved, if you want to stack your totality images from beginning to end, you might find it a little bit challenging aligning the moon uh, and the prominences together because it may not make a lot of sense uh, because you know, they appear in some, not in, another, not in others. So that's something for you to work out. And because the moon moves across the sun and prominences appear and disappear, aligning totality images from you know three minutes of totality can get really challenging. So the best way to do this is to take one bracket of exposure. So I, for example, I have exposures here, let's say, from here, which is one two thousandths of a second, all the way to here, which is one or four seconds. I can take this and just process this as one bracket and the moon wouldn't have moved as much to give me that much of a trouble when I'm aligning. And that's what I'm gonna show you today. And I moved, curated a bunch of them into this folder here called HDR. They range from one two thousandths of a second, so I renamed them so that they're easier to read, all the way to four seconds. And if you look at our two and four second exposures, we can see that it is extremely blown out. And I'm going to try and get some earth shine out of this later, but for this video, I'm actually going to leave these two out and only stack once or one two thousandths of a second all the way to one second. Um, the ordering is just a little bit messed up because of the title, but of the, because of the names, but we're gonna open up Photoshop. We're gonna load just these 12 frames and you'll notice that this is double the number of data that I stacked in the last video. So we're hoping I can get some good detail. So open up Photoshop. And then we're going to go to file, scripts, load files into stack. I'll go browse. And then I'm going to select my one or half second to one two thousandths of a second. And then I will load that or to one second. And I'll load that into my stack here and press OK. So these opened in this order. Uh, so I'm going to spend a second to reorder these. Okay, so I re ordered these from the fastest shutter speed to the slowest shutter speed because it'll make aligning a little bit easier for me because the prominence that we'll be aligning on, this one here is the brightest on the one two thousandths of a second exposure. It uh, looks brighter on the one one thousandths because, because the corona is also brighter, it kind of washes out a little bit. So one two thousandths is actually really good for me. And you'll notice that when I zoom out that it is off center. This was a, a little bit of a disappointment on my solar quest because it did lose where the sun was for 
a few seconds and instead of tracking it took the eclipse off center. So before we do anything else, I want to crop this because we want to make sure that the eclipse is at the center of our frame because when we do a radial blur later on, we want to make sure that this is centered. Otherwise, we will have slight issues, not the end of the world. So do, do as good of a job as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. And press OK. So we're working with a kind of a square image. Now we're going to align this really quickly. So the trick to do it, as I showed you last time, is if I select all of these layers and then change the blending options from normal to difference, we can see slight differences. And you can see that unlike the last one, the alignment is actually a lot better because my solar quest did end up doing a good job of tracking the sun once it was eclipsed after it had lost tracking for a few seconds. But you can see that it's, it's pretty well aligned, but there are still some imperfections. So I only have to move some of these a few pixels and the way I'm going to do it and the way a few of you have, ha have recommended that I do is make sure that I have just one reference frame. So in my last video, I kept switching the reference frame and that was not a good idea, I agree. And so this one, I'm going to keep my one two thousandths of a second frame as a reference frame. So this is what every other frame will stack into. And um, instead of stacking on the moon itself, I'm going to do my best to stack on the prominence instead. One challenge here is that once you get to the brighter exposures here, you can't see the prominence anymore. So at that point, we're going to have to do our best to guesstimate where the prominence is by aligning a little bit of the moon. So and on the one second, it's really gone. And I think like around the 160th second. No, not even like in the 1 250th second is the last time we actually see the prominence before the corona just gets too bright and washes out the prominences. So those are the challenges and I'm going to do my best to align this and I'm going to just make these two visible in my 2000 1 2000 I'm going to make this like 60% opacity and then I'll just use my arrow keys to align it and I'm going to make sure that you know 1 2000th of a second stays put. I'm going to select the 1 1000th of a second the bottom layer and I'm going to just use my arrow keys to align it. And I think this is good. So if I, there you go, blink on and off, you can see that it, it's a little bit better. And now I'm gonna uncheck this, do this one for one five hundredth of a second. Again, make sure the right layer is selected. I'm gonna move it over a little bit. And after some slight adjustments, I'll check on the other prominence. I think it looks pretty good. And then I'll blink this on and off. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, so now I'm not gonna make you sit through me aligning all of these. So with the magic of editing, I'm gonna skip to the end. All right, that took me a few minutes to do, and this is now the final result of difference in all of them. There's some artifacts around the area, but I think we can work those out when we stack these. So now I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to select all of them and change them back to normal. And now we're going to, while they're all selected, right click and click convert to smart object. Once we're there, now we want to stack this. So we'll go to layer, to smart objects, and then stack mode. And then we're going to do mean stack, get an average of all the pixels. And then this is the stack. So if you saw my picture that I posted a few days ago, uh, the edges of the moon looked a little bit wonky because it wasn't really aligned. But now if we move in closer, you can see that it's much smoother and the prominences look much better. And this is a pretty nice HDR stack. If I zoom in, you know, the prominences here are not really visible. We can see that there are some like stacking artifacts here and that's because I had to move the moon down a little bit so that we can align on the prominence itself and not the moon. So there's there's some stuff there, but it's not going to be really visible once we are done editing this. So I have this and now I'm going to save this as if you guessed OG, you guessed right. And before we continue, we want to make sure that we are working with a single layer, not a smart object, because we'll need it in order to apply our subtraction and multiply uh, 
images later on. So we're going to right click and click on rasterize layer and that turns it in just flattens it. And we want to make sure that we save it so that we have our OG.psd again. Probably should have done the flattening before I saved it as OG, but it's okay. We can do that at any point. Just want to make sure you do it before you save the blur. So now what we're going to do is click on filter. We'll do a blur, radial blur. And the best option I found that works for me is nine, between nine and 10, and the quality is best. And once this finishes, you'll notice that the spikes here are going to kind of disappear and just blur out. And it's kind of like creating a kind of a synthetic flat. And okay, so we have that. Now we wanna make sure we save as blur.psd. Okay, All right, so now we have blur. Now we wanna open our OG back. So we have that with the spikes. And now we want to go to image, apply image, bring that here. We're gonna make sure our source is blur. And instead of multiply blending, we're gonna subtract blending. The scale I'm keeping at one, the opacity I'm keeping at one, and the offset I found works between like 40 and 50. So I'm gonna keep it 50 for this one. You should play with your settings and see what you like. Uh, I think 50 works for me, so press okay. And now we're gonna do save file, save as, we'll call this subtracted. And now we will do file, open, and then we'll open our OG one more time. So now we're going to apply our subtracted image onto this. So we'll do image, apply image, make sure the source is subtracted. And instead of subtracting, we're going to multiply leave opacity at 100, press OK. Now this looks kind of familiar to uh, the end result of our last one. And if we zoom in, we can see pretty cool like fabric -y features here, like around the moon, around the eclipse here. It looks pretty cool. So now we're gonna make some edits to this. We'll do filter, camera raw filter. Okay, once that's opened up, the I'm just going to start adding stuff here. So I'm gonna do exposure. So I'm gonna do exposure, I'm gonna do like, two and a half, just a little bit of contrast, not too much. Highlights, it'll be around the moon. Open up the shadows a little bit. Just moving everything a little bit to the right. And Photoshop literally updated and Camera Raw literally updated like an hour ago after I did my test run. And now they moved the texture editing to here. So now it's in effects. Great, so now I have to open that up. And now I can do clarity. I'll increase the clarity so we can see more of the coronal loops here a little bit better. Not that much, I'll do like say 62. Increase the texture a little bit. You can see it starts to look a little bit better. And admittedly, I could have done a little bit better of a job aligning the frames here but it's okay it'll still work so far this looks okay i'm going to go into detail i'm going to do a little bit of noise reduction not a lot like 10 percent and if we preview on and off i don't know if it translates into the video but for me uh, some of the grain here is is gone and it looks a little bit better to me okay and the prominence also looks good. Then one more thing you can do is, where do they move it to? So yeah, so now temperature is under colors, no longer on top. I'm gonna move the temperature just a tiny bit, make it a little bit bluer, so that it kind of matches what we saw in the sky. This is, this is the kind of color that I remember, so I'll just leave that. You can up the vibrance a little bit if you want, or the saturation a little bit if you want, not too much. Okay, it looks good. And then I think this is good for this. Press OK. So this is before and this is after. If you go to history, we can go to apply image. We can see the before and after. We can go all the way to the beginning. So this is before, just a regular stack, applying our subtracted layer, and then camera raw. It looks pretty nice. And the trick I've been doing, so before I move on, I'm just gonna click, you know, file save, make sure I have that saved. So the trick I've been doing is kind of 
double stacking the blur and subtracted method. So I'm going to duplicate this layer. So you can right click and duplicate, or you can do control J and it'll duplicate the layer. And I am going to save this one more time. I'm going to hide my first layer. And on this layer here, I'm going to do filter, blur, radial blur, pretty much the exact same thing I did before. Once that's done, I'll save as. So I'll do blur level two. And then I'll open up OG. We're still working on the same OG file, but this time it has two layers. And now I'm going to do image, apply image. So it's going to be blur level, blur level two is the source. And I'm going to subtract. So I have that. You can see it looks a little bit more fabric-y. I'm going to keep the scale and offset 1 and 50. Press OK. So I have this. And now I'm going to do file save as subtracted level 2. Great. And now I'm going to open up OG one more time. And then I'm going to do apply image, apply image, select subtracted level two, because this is my second stack. And instead of subtract, I'm going to do multiply. Press OK. So I have that on my second layer here. So this is the first layer, untouched. This is my second layer. I'm going to do filter, camera raw. I'm going to increase the exposure just a tiny bit less than before, increase the contrast. Again, I'm just increasing all of these a little bit by little bit. And then I'm seeing the details here popping out. Temperature, actually I'm keeping the temperature the same. Um, under effects, I'll do a little bit of clarity, a little bit of texture. Under detail, I'm going to do a little bit of noise reduction. So I see a ton of green here. So I think what we can do is we can go to color mixer. I think this is just some stacking artifacts. I can go to green saturation all the way down, all the way down. So now we have like zero saturation on the greens there. And it's not as important because I'm not going to apply the whole layer. So I'll press OK. So this is the second layer and now I'm going to set the opacity to like 50%. 50%. So this is before, after we see some stuff there. And then what we can do is we can adjust the brightness and the levels a little bit. So I'll go to layer. I'll create a new adjustment later because it's easier to uh, change later on to manipulate around. So I'll do adjustment layer levels. Create a new level slayer. I'm just going to bring the white point down a little bit so that it's a little bit brighter. Great. We have some stacking artifacts there, so I will crop down a tiny bit, but make sure the sun is still centered. Great. And then what we can do here is select the top layer here. We can do image adjustments. We can do brightness and contrast adjustments there. We can do you know, increase the contrast a little bit, increase the brightness a little bit. Just a tiny bit. Okay. There we go. So now we can, you know, remove the levels layer if we wanted to. And then we have our first layer, our second layer, and our levels layer. And I think this looks pretty good. Uh, again, if I were to redo this, I would make sure I stack it a little bit better so I don't have these artifacts around the prominences. Uh, even being careful with the stacking, I, it's, 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 it's pretty hard, especially with the, uh, the brighter exposures. But you know, zooming in, you know, there are a couple of stars here. Uh, someone pointed out that there is uh, something here. This ended up being uh, thermal noise, not any kind of other exposure artifact there. There's a star here. I already said that. I think there's a star here as well. And 
I think this is good. Alrighty, and then I just added my little footer note there, and I think this is complete. So, if you have any thoughts about my double stacking method here, I am interested in hearing it. I am really like happy with the fabric stuff here. I'm I'm gonna redo this a separate way uh, without the pressures of recording a video and see if I can get this without the green artifacts there. But this is it. This is what we have and I'm pretty happy with it. And, and those of you asking like, what if you triple stack it or quadruple stack it, will it get better? Uh, I've tried triple stacking it. it. It gets a little bit harder to, to mesh everything in, but if you can do it, then by all means, feel free to do it. I would recommend, you know, creating a different layer and working on that, you know, save your files, make sure you don't overwrite what you have. Speaking of, I will save my file, control S, and then we can export this as a PNG and it is ready to be shared. So I was able to clean up some of the color fringing by redoing my stack with a little bit better alignment. But even then there was still color fringing around the prominences. So in order to fix that, I kind of cheated a little bit and used the clone stamp tools to fix that area. But I made sure that I stuck around just in that area and it's not something that looks really weird even when you zoom in. And I absolutely love just how much the prominences stand out both in color and saturation. And as you saw from the video is that I didn't really do any kind of special edits to the prominences themselves. I just made sure that that my one two thousandths of a second layer was on the very top. And then when I stacked it, the stacking process and the blurring process and the subtracting process all just kept the prominences where they were and the color differences just made it look a little bit brighter and I absolutely love how it came out. So keep the comments and questions coming. I'm loving all of them. And I'm also working on a video where I want to highlight photos taken by people like you. So if you have a photo that you wanna showcase in one of my future videos, let me know below or join our Discord server and we can you can message me and I can give you some more information uh, such as what image you're using, how to credit you, your social media profile, etc. cetera. Uh, we can discuss those details later if you are interested. The eclipse was an amazing experience and I am totally ready for the next one.